Hello everyone, it's me Nandini Devi, the Chef de Guru. Welcome to my channel. Please join in this community and help it to grow by subscribing and liking this video and commenting below. So first of all, you know how we start with a little prayer, with a little breath, just to tune in to the space that we're in right now. So we're going to call in our spirit guides, our angels, our elevated ancestors, God, God is source, creator, however you may know your higher power, your higher self. We take a deep breath. Exhale. So we protect this space with the power of our guides. We stay in alignment with the truth in a mutually healing way. Okay. So I wanted to talk about dream work, but I'm also feeling like a lot of energy. I'm just moving a lot of energy aside right now because I feel like there's so much energy coming into this video. Um, it may have to do with the fact that it's about anxious dreams it's about dreams in general so make sure that you come in here in peace take a moment take a breath be with yourself you know that's how we receive our information the best people who are channeling on youtube we're just channeling information and knowledge and energy and then you're digesting it in your own way so be sure to come here with peace so that you're able to really receive what you need to so dream world all right, there's some things that I wanted to share about the dream world. You may be drawn to this information because you're having stressful dreams or traumatic memories in your dreams, or maybe you're a dream traveler or a dream warrior or astral traveler. Maybe you astral project. All these things could be connected in some way to you. And what I've learned through my years of dream travel and dream being in the dream world is that I'm not always aware, even today, that I'm doing that work. I mean, I know overall, I just don't know when it's going to happen or when it's, when it's occurring. And sometimes I have to pull apart what is happening on a psychological level, a physical level, a spiritual level, and, and then all those things, how they interplay. So this is for spiritual awareness, and I'll add a little bit of the psychological aspect to it, but that's not really the focus. The focus is on spirit. The focus is on giving some clarity or maybe sharing some things that could help you in your journey. A lot of people suggest getting a dream journal. I would suggest this as well. Use a Google Doc if you can, because then you can like search through your dreams. I like to do that. And also, if you feel that you need to clear your space, where you sleep above your head to the sides of you, what's in your room, these things could matter. So if you need like to set up a little altar or have some amethyst or you know, a glass of water that you could dump the next day, something that you know you could purify and clear your space. Because if you're an astral warrior or if you're traveling different realms, you may need guardians to assist you, okay? So the thing with the dream world is that we also need protection out there. And if you ever come for me in my dreams, you will know that you will meet my guardian, Kali, Badra Kali, and you'll see that you can't mess with me out there. <laughs> and there's something about that. There's something about that that's really important. If you are a spiritual being, if you're a healer, if you've been called to this work in whatever capacity, you don't have to even call yourself a healer. You could be an artist, you could be a filmmaker, you could be a teacher, you could be a doctor, you could be you know, unemployed, it does not matter. You just may have this power and ability and you may do it naturally, you know? And you may be out there assisting the planet, assisting other people. You have a mission or a dharma that connects to traveling in the dream world, okay? It's where you get the most done. For instance, if you do Reiki or if you work with Reiki practitioners, right, which is a type of energy healing, Reiki has a symbol inside of it that allows you to travel to another person that's at distance to give them Reiki. So think about that in terms of the dream world. You're just traveling with your eyes closed in a rested state, in a deep rested state, your your spirit, your energy is traveling or what you who you work with is traveling to other people. And so one of the things that's really important is doing cord cutting, right? Etheric cord cutting. We have etheric, emotional, mental 
causal, cosmic, astral bodies. Okay, we have auric bodies. And things and people and situations and feelings attached to these things. So we need to clear that energy. We need to clear it off of us. So what is helpful is to have that be a part of your, you know, daily or weekly or bi-weekly practice, however feels right to you, to clear these etheric cords, okay? You call in a deity, you pray, and you can look stuff up about this as well. I have some stuff on my Patreon if you join on there. The link is below. And it's in my website, theshaktaguru.com. And if you are actual projecting, right? Or if you have issues with disassociating, for instance, I have issues with disassociating. And that's a psychological thing, right? It's a trauma response. It's a way of coping and surviving. But it's also connected to the fact that I can actual travel and dream travel. My mental illness on the mental plane and in the physical world is not necessarily separate from my spiritual gifts. They kind of look different in different worlds. It's like, you know, what looks one way in the physical world and the spiritual lens has a totally different scope and they're connected, you know? So, and in the physical world, there's a, you know, so there's like different views of these things, perspectives that we take on the same situation or issue or or gift, depending on where you're looking at it, okay? Um, and also, for those of you who showed up because you're having anxious dreams where you're recounting traumatic events, if some of these things look like stuff that you don't recall in this life, you might be channeling someone else's pain or experience and you need to clear and cleanse that or you're helping that person to move that issue. So you're helping them to transmute and release that energy and out there you're seeing a vision of it. Now in your waking life, you might wake up and you're anxious and stressed out. There's a there's some things that you could do. Number one, you most definitely need a morning meditation and prayer practice. If you are an astral traveler, if you're a person who leaves your body in your sleep and goes off and does things, when you come back, you need to ground yourself. You need to feed yourself. You need to drink water. You need to replenish your physical body for what it's experiencing when your spirit returns with that much intensity, Okay. Uh, then there's also um, this other aspect of dream travel that has to do with traveling within yourself as well. So traveling through different parts of your body that might be holding on to a lot of trauma. And then you have an experience that's activating that in your physical body. You could be healing your trauma in your sleep. And this is a psychological thing. This is something that w is talked about in psychology, in modern psychology, in terms of you know, how we repair ourselves, our minds, our thinking, our, our healing happens when we're asleep. So if you're doing heavy spiritual practices, or if you're meditating, if you're using crystals, if you're using Reiki, if you've just received some kind of healing, if you're watching Reiki videos or meditation videos, and then you're going about your day, you might not notice it. But when you're sleeping, and you finally have time to rest, that's when all the transformation is happening. These doesn't doesn't mean what you see in your dream is a prof prophecy because sometimes we're having anxiety dreams and we're not having psychic dreams where we're seeing the future or seeing something that's going to happen. But you might imagine it like a lot of memes I see online where they're like, oh, this person cheat like dreaming of your partner cheating on you and waking up and getting mad. It's like you're left with the residue of that energy but that could be an anxiety that you have it could be a trauma that you have of betrayal it could be something that that person's dealing with it could be a fear they have or something and it could also be something psychic so the way that you would deal with that hopefully is not by ruining or self-sabotaging or you know in, in like basically putting that person through hell by you know, going through their phone or something, but instead taking some time and grounding yourself and staying present. Is this useful information right now? Is this going to help me if I call this person and, and berate them with questions, right? It's like, I, I think, or accusations rather, right? It's like, you need to take some space and, and process first. And uh, another dream travel thing is, I, I mentioned that at the beginning is amethyst. If you put amethyst by your bed, make sure you cleanse and clear it because that's really important. In terms of traveling through different parts of the body, 
you can know when you're having a uh, energy dream that's connected to your solar plexus, for instance, because that's where a lot of anxiety is. There's themes in your dream. Pay attention to the themes. Are they pain related? Are they pleasure related? Are they abundance related? Are they love related? You know, is there safety issues? And then learn about the chakras because the chakras will tell you what part of you is connected to that dream. What part of you are you healing? Or what part of you could get healing and attention? So let's say you're continuously having this anxious dream. It's not clearing anything necessarily. It's just letting you know this is something that's going on. This is something that needs attention. Then if you know, like you keep dreaming of like, let's say you're running from somebody who's coming after you to hurt you. And in your waking life, you can pay attention to the healing in your root chakra. And you can do the healing there to alleviate whatever is being shown to you in the dream world sometimes things are shown to us in the dream world because in the physical world we're not resting enough in meditation to receive guidance on these things our lives may be busy we may not be feeling depressed or anxious or any of these things that are that is sort of creating a block to meditating i encourage you even if it's 30 seconds to try to meditate because the effects of it and building that practice is so helpful even if you don't see it the results of that at first you'll notice how it becomes an ally to you your breath your body you you teach yourself how to trust yourself that you're going to be there for you in this in this way of just even breathing there was a time where like if i was in the in a conversation with somebody and i was hurt by something i would have never have thought of let me take a second and breathe like I would think that that's awkward or socially, you know, unacceptable in some way. Now, if I'm in a conversation with somebody and I know I'm not triggered past the point of knowing, but if I know, if I consciously am aware that I need to pause, I will. And that even having a meditation practice that I did on my own allowed me to show up in the world where I care for myself better. So it's a slow process and I'm still continuing to work on that, but it's helpful. Now, if we're in a conversation and something triggering happens or something goes on and I need to take a second, I say, I need a moment and I breathe and I trust myself. It teaches me to love myself. It teaches self-worth. It teaches prioritizing yourself and self-care no matter who is around, no matter who that is, because it's about you taking care of you, okay? And then when your cup runneth over, you can offer it to others, okay? So I'm sending you all lots of love on this journey, this dream journey. Remember to get your journal out. Reach out if you need support. You know, find community to talk about these things. And some people that you'll find in your community are dream interpreters. But you and your associations with dreams is the most important. Remember that. Your guides are sometimes telling you things that you have associations with. And that's how you'll find the answers. It's not necessarily the, the dream dictionary's raccoon definition. It's what you associate with raccoons write that down and look at it but talking to others helps us to process so that's why the community is important and it also helps us to validate each other and support each other on these journeys okay i'm sending you again lots and lots and lots of love and care and appreciation and i hope that this video was helpful to you take care